They just took down a Philly team who were on fire, but for the season overall, the New York Knicks have generally developed a habit for giving up leads. Don't forget, it was against that very Sixer team they just beat, where in a separate game, the first 10 minutes of the fourth quarter saw New York score just six points in total. Far from just that, as you'll see, this Tom Thibodeau coach ball club has struggled tremendously to close out games. We talked about Luka's miracle back in December, where in the final 44 seconds, Dallas somehow overcame a 9-point deficit against New York. The Knicks have also blown a 23-point lead against the Hawks and a 14-point lead to Portland in November. They gave up a 7-point fourth-quarter lead and a loss to the Bulls. Against Milwaukee, New York surrendered a 17-point lead with 14 minutes left. Last year, this same Thibodeau coach ball club blew a 28-point lead to Brooklyn, which shows us what's happened this year isn't anything new. However, while the Knicks have been labeled as middle of the pack, you can't forget New York won eight straight games at one point against a lot of really good teams, and in lieu of not being able to close out many games, does that mean the Knicks could be better than their record? I can't imagine how infuriating it is for Knicks fans who have to predictably watch their team run out of gas and lose their edge when it's time to execute. What's the real reason for these blown leads? Is it a real concern, or should we have a more optimistic stance on this current Knicks roster in comparison to other years? Based off, as I said, they could be better than their record. As special as Jalen Brunson, Julius Randle, and RJ Barrett are, there's still no bona fide superstar on this Knicks team, meaning if this team's going to have consistent success, they can't stroll into games or stroll when they're up in games. The underdog mentality has to be there 100% of the time. They can't rely on hero ball when they get down. New York's over-aggressive defensive scheming in the half court and lack of focus on transition opportunities where they're scrambling with zero communication, like right here where they leave Ingles open, show you that it isn't simply a matter of effort with this Knicks team. This BLOB with Ingles inbounding sees Bobby, Giannis, and Holiday create a horizontal wall. Holiday break the wall, popping out to the top of the arc to receive the floater pass from Ingles. Then Adetokounmpo and Portis set a stagger screen, which just breaks down the Knicks setup entirely. This big body takes Grimes out of the play, and while Giannis is one of the NBA's best screen setters, Grimes just trails the play and doesn't have an impact after getting pinned on either Ingles or Giannis. This closeout from Randall sees him not communicate with any of his teammates. He's got to at least point to someone as one of the Knicks' primary leaders. Jalen Brunson's completely in no man's land right here, just roaming, not having an impact on the weak side. And on his closeout, it seems like he's really worried about Grayson Allen potentially driving based off his footwork. After Giannis falls down here, Randall opts to save energy and lay off him before Adetokounmpo sneaks up on Julius for the O board and put back. All to overcome a 17 point deficit. In addition to those plays, this simple early offense weak side DHO from Giannis sees Randall leave Adetokounmpo wide open on the roll, quickly does a nice job of getting back to Ingles on the trail, but after the lob, you see Julius blame the younger Emmanuel for his mistake. However, for the most part, Julius Randle has been really good this season. Randle's career progression has seen him steadily polish every weapon in his bag, taking him from an 11 point per game limited offensive type role player in his rookie year back in LA into a now 25 point per game score averaging a double double. From 3 point range from that 10 to 16, 3 to 10 feet away mid range area, as well as down low in the painted area, Randall's significantly increased his percentages in comparison to last season. From that 21 22 campaign where New York finished six games back of the play in tournament as the number 11 seed, Julius has increased his efficiency from beyond the arc by 2.8 percentage points. He's increased his paint efficiency by 4.1 percentage points. He's increased his efficiency from 10 to 16 by 7.1 percentage points. And what really shocked me, Randall's percentage from 3 to 10 feet away from the basket has increased by 14 percentage points. If you're questioning the impact Julius has defensively, he's currently fifth at his position position in defensive rating despite that mistake he made earlier and the occasional lapse in focus. The addition of the $104 million Kyle Lowry archetype Jalen Brunson and the Toronto-born phenom RJ Barrett gives New York a decent amount of top-heavy firepower. 
Overall though, despite blown leads becoming habitual for these Knicks, there's the slightest bit of hope for their chances when you consider that if New York does one or two things right in those miracle comebacks for their opponents, then they'd own one of the top seeds in the Eastern Conference, sitting 7th place despite every collapse New York and its fan base have gone through this year isn't the worst sign for this team's potential success in 2023's postseason. Are blown leads a real concern, or is New York on the other hand better than their record? Whoever gives the best take on that question earns next video shoutout. Top 5 commenters with the most shoutouts by March 21st earn free merch of their choosing. Last video I asked, what are you most excited about with the new look Mavs? Shoutout to Amino MMA who says, as a EuroLeague watcher, I'm most excited to see Luka reiterate his play from Real Madrid into the NBA. He played off ball pretty well in Europe, and so I hope to see that the Mavericks start using him this way as well to show even more of what he can do next to Kyrie who's already proven he can play off ball too. The Dallas offense should be much more fun to watch now and I hope the fit comes together soon. Great take right there. Thanks for watching. Have a good one.